So apparently I'm live. Hey everybody, Martin here, and welcome to my uh, YouTube channel, and I'm going to try to go live uh, with a playthrough, of a playthrough of a game that I love called Hit Z Road uh, by Martin Wallace. And this is going to be the solo version of the game. And um, yeah, so <laughs> let me explain to you how the solo version of the game uh, differs from the multiplayer version. So in the multiplayer version, you know, there's a mechanic called uh, bidding, auctioning, uh, which is completely absent from the solo version of the game. And um, you might think, well, if you take out a big mechanic that's part of the game, you take out basically 50% of the game, then the game's not going to be very good. And you would be wrong, because actually, as a solo game, um, this game is uh, pretty good. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot of fun, and it's one of my favorites, as I already mentioned. Um, so in the solo version, it becomes a kind of story-driven um, survival game where you try to get from the suburbs of Chicago, you and a ragtag band of survivors have to get from Chicago to Los Angeles. That's your, your goal in the game. Um, so here are your meeples that represent you and your uh, team of survivors. You start with five at the start of the game. And then um, you start with a, a little bit of resources. So I'm going to continue game setup as I'm explaining here. So here are uh, four um, tokens which represent four units of gas or gasoline. And you start with that. So I'm going to place them here. Um, you also start with four ammo just for ammo. And as you know, in the uh, zombie apocalypse, ammo is extremely important, right? So we've got four ammo there. And finally, we'll start with four adrenaline. Now, adrenaline is a resource in this game that allows you to modify your dice rolls. So here's your dice, and I'll explain the dice a little bit later on. But yeah, I mean, um, so you've got limited resources, you have just five of you, and you're going to have to make it through a zombie-infested wasteland uh, to L.A., which apparently is where, you know, um, there's sanctuary waiting for you there. There's safety and sanctuary waiting for you there. Um, so these cards over here, whoop, <laughs> in the solo game, um, you play through eight rounds. And so I've repurposed the auction board here. It no longer uh, works for the auction mechanic. Um, but it has a uh, it has a numbers from one to ten and space marked spaces from one to ten, and so I use this to keep track of the rounds. If you make it to the eighth round, represented by this blue marker over here, uh, then you have completed the game, uh, and then you have to figure out what your score is based on you know. Uh, how many survivors you have left, how many resources you have left, how many uh, victory points you've acquired as you made as you work your way through the game. So that's kind of how that works. And then um, these cards represent the paths, the possible paths that you would be taking to get from Chicago to LA. Every round you're going to have a choice of three paths. One path will be completely unknown information, completely hidden. Um, so that's obviously the most risk, but to entice you to take that risk, um, you'll also gain resources for choosing that path. Um, another path will be completely known information. You're going to know the first and second part of the path, and um, then, you know, so it's less of a risk because it's already a known equation. But to penalize you for choosing that known equation, you're going to have to give up two resources to be able to choose that. And then the last path, the middle path, so they're going to be um, kind of laid out here in a tableau, uh, one, two, three. The middle path, the number two path, is going to be the first part is known and the second part is unknown. Um, and so to, to choose that path, you would neither have to spend nor gain any resources. So uh, that's kind of the setup here um, for this game. Now... Uh, there are another, another thing that we have to uh, explain is the dice. So there are dice here, um, and these dice are used to resolve combat. There's kind of the, the black dice, which, um, you know, kind of have normal effects, and then there's the um, horde dice, these red dice, that give you instant death or permadeath. Um, so these are for the really tough battles. Okay. So I think that I've explained enough to be able to get started. So let's start playing. Um, 
And uh, if anybody uh, would like to uh, interact with me while I'm playing or keep me company or just let me know you're here, why don't you drop a, um, why don't you drop a comment in the chat, okay? Um, so once again, this is Martin and we are playing Hit Z Road solo. Okay, so let's start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set out the cards for the first path. So this is the first card and then the second card. All right, that's the middle path. And then the top path is going to be completely hidden information like so. Oh, by the way, these uh, these cards are arranged and they don't get shuffled. Um, so they're arranged from the level one cards, the level two cards in the middle, and then the level three cards at the bottom. And those are in, in increasing order of difficulty. Um, and as you uh, set up the game, after you set up your each level, you randomly remove four cards from uh, that stack. Um, so there's a level of replayability in the game in that you don't know which four cards were removed, so you're not going to be encountering those four cards for this particular uh, session. Um, and then um, you might encounter them in, when you play through the game again. So there's a little bit of replayability here. Um, well, I've played it a lot, so I kind of like it. Um, the last path that I'm going to lay out for level one is going to be completely known information, like so. All right. So now, here in round one, let's take a look at our options here. Um, I can already see an option that I really like to take here. So let me go ahead and help you analyze um, what we're seeing here. So as I said, uh, the top path uh, completely face down cards, meaning um, completely hidden information, right? So uh, we don't know what's going on there. Uh, but to entice you to take that uh, unknown path in case you wanted to, you would gain your choice of two resources for choosing that path. Now to take uh, this bottom path here with the cards face up, um, you know exactly what you're going to get. And uh, to penalize you for choosing completely known path, you have to give up two resources of your choice to be able to choose this path. And in this middle path, there's no penalty, there's no bonus for taking it. The first part is known, the second part is unknown. So um, so that's kind of like how that works out. Now let's go specifically and look at these cards and let me tell you what I'm seeing. Um, here on the bottom, I'm seeing quite a bit. Uh, so the first part is uh, there's a bus, right? And it says our new home. So I guess you, you know, thematically you find shelter in that bus. Now, the icons here on the left side of the card indicate the resources you would gain for choosing that card. And in this case, um, apparently this bus, which is parked beside a gas station, you would earn four cans of gas, which is amazing. But it also says, take the um, kind of a, a token that is the, the icon of the steering wheel. So these tokens uh, could be good for you, but they could also be bad for you, depending on how things work out. Generally, these um, token thingies, um, they ask you to take them in the first stage, and then there's a companion card later down the road where uh, you take a second card, which kind of closes the loop in terms of what happens because you took that token. And uh, in my experience, could be good, but a lot of the times it could also be very, very bad for you. So um, that's a risk, right? So there's a there's definitely a calculation of risk reward as you're playing this game. All right, so, um, and then, so that's the first part of this path. And then on the second part of this path is you find um, uh, 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 a weapons cache. You find a, a nice sniper rifle, it looks like, and you get, you gain three units of ammo three ammo tokens, but you also have to take kind of like the uh, sniper scope token. Um, so there's a lot to recommend this bottom path right now. Uh, to take it, I would have to give up two resources, but I think it's worth it because I would be gaining seven resources in exchange. So um, that's a pretty good deal. But um, we'd be also getting these tokens here which could potentially turn out to be very, very bad move down the road. So uh, there's a little bit to consider there, but let's uh, change our attention to the middle path here. Um, 
The first part, which is the only part that's known, is a farmhouse, Odell at Dawn. And um, to uh, choose this path, I would earn two ammo and one gas. So that's kind of cool. And also, I would get one victory point. So that's what this kind of purple icon in the upper right is, a victory point. Um, so that's cool too, because neither of these cards will provide victory points. And then, completely unknown second part. This could be a fight with a bunch of zo uh, walkers, zombies, um, or not. And then this top part here, completely unknown. And I generally only choose the unknown if, based on the information I see, things don't look very good. But things look pretty good right now. So, uh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to choose the completely known path, this third path down here. Um, so to do that, I'm going to have to give up resources. So I'm, I know I'm going to gain two gas so and three ammo. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give up one gas and one ammo. And I really, you know, there's, there's no point in me um, discarding those to the supply because I know that now I'm going to have to get four gas. There you go. And then I'll resolve the ammo a little later on. So let's uh, resolve this first card. So we end up kind of taking shelter in a bus parked beside a gas station. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there was no threat. And um, we got we earned four gas as a result of doing that. So we've resolved that first part. Now, we, well, we haven't yet because it says take the token that looks like a steering wheel. So I'm gonna look through the stack of tokens here for the token that looks like a steering wheel. And I'm going to need that token for later. There we go. All right. So now we have completely resolved this first card. Uh, and we've got this token that looks like a steering wheel. Put that there. Now let's resolve this uh, second part of the path. Uh, it says, first of all, to take three ammo. So we'll take three ammo. Cool. And then it says take the sniper scope token. So I've taken that as well. I have those two tokens uh, and they're in my inventory. Okay, so on our first leg of the game, the first leg of our trip from Chicago to LA, we have um, completed it. So we will now take, put, take away all these cards and I'm not even gonna take a look at uh, the other cards that I didn't choose. I'm not gonna look at the path not taken. Well, you know, actually it might be fun. Let's try that. What if we had chosen, what if we had chosen this middle path? We would have gotten one victory point. We would have gotten two ammo, one uh, gas. And then the second part of it would have been, ooh, uh, two victory points and one adrenaline token. Uh, apparently a uh, oil tanker burst into into flames oh and it released um, it released toxic fumes and it says take the biohazard token so that is definitely bad I know for a fact that that token is bad so I kind of feel that even though there was more victory points here I dodged a bullet so I'm glad I didn't take path number two what would path number one have been so the first one would have been uh, earn one ammo because you find a map to a bunker at Archer Street and then take the map token, which generally is good, I think. And the second part would have been a pack of dogs is chasing us, discard one of your resources. Um, so that wouldn't have been a great move for me had I chosen that because I would have basically been out one resource even though I would have gained ammo. So. I'm pre feeling pretty good about the choice I made. And now I advance the round marker to round number two. And now I set out more cards. And that's pretty much how the game goes. It's very light and there's just, you know, kind of light choices that you make each turn. And um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm happy with that, actually. Okay, so what do we got now? We have, from what we can see, this bottom um, leg, we have a fight. Uh, the first part of it would be a fight. 
earn one gas, earn one adrenaline, but you have to fight three zombies. Which, you know, we could fight three zombies. We can take them. Um, we've got quite a bit of ammo right now. Um, and we've got some adrenaline tokens. So I'm feeling pretty good if we have to get into a fight. And then the second part is old guy who gave us the map. Uh, we would earn one adrenaline and then we would take a map token, which is also kind of cool. Um, I generally don't start the game with this many of these, like, you know, two-part tokens, so I'm feeling a little bit antsy about that, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. Okay, and then for the middle path, um, it says, it's an ammo, uh, kind of an ammo uh, depot, right? Um, Christmas in September, and you would earn four ammo for doing that and get one victory point. Now on the bottom here, there's no victory points. Even this fight here, you wouldn't earn victory points for doing that. So that is an indication that I probably don't want to choose that. I see a victory point over here, and I know I'm going to get ammo, although I don't know what part two is there. That could be a big fight. Um, so, but you know what? I'm going to choose path number two. So I'm going to take away path number three right now. And let's take a look at path... Mm, let's do that later. Okay. All right. So first of all, choosing path number two, we don't have a penalty. We don't have a bonus. And I will take four ammo. All Okay, and um, we just take this card and we earn a victory point. So I'm going to put it here in our victory point pile. And that means we've earned a victory point already. And now let's take a look at the second part of this path. It is the team's newest recruit, Tim Deadeye, first class. So we have a new recruit. So. I've, I've actually tangled with this kid before. Um, and we get another victory point. And it says take the token that kind of looks like a stick figure. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. This kid is sort of a loose cannon. So um, he could very well uh, end up screwing us over, depending on what other cards lie ahead. <laughs> But so far so good. Uh, we earn another victory point for that. And so that goes in there. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and shut the door a little bit just so I don't bother other people. All right. So that was good. Um, and that was round two. Now let's take a look at what we would have gotten had we chosen uh, the top the top path. So the first part would have been uh, also meeting another survivor. Dad has left Reb has let Reb travel with us. Take one survivor. Oh, I means I have to take a survivor here because Timmy joined us. There you go. There's Timmy, and we would have gotten a victory point for that plus two ammo. And then the second part would have been a fight, four zombie fight, with uh, one victory point. So that would have been kind of cool too, had we chosen that. Um, so far we haven't been getting into uh, fights, which is, you know, good. Um, good for now, because believe me, we're going to get into a lot of fights with zombies before this is over, uh, for sure. Okay, so that was round two. We move on to round three, uneventful so far. Pardon me for a second. Okay, so now let's do round three. Now, round three, we've gone to the stage two cards and, you know, the level, or the level two cards. So things are getting tougher for sure. So let's set out the level two cards. So the first path with completely unknown information. The second with the first card flipped up. Second part on flipped down. Why does that keep changing? And then the second, the third part where everything is completely flipped up and known information. 
Okay, so what do we got? Let's take a look at this with uh, all the information exposed. Um, the first part of it is you stay at a motel, you get an adrenaline token, and it says still no Wi-Fi. So no victory points there, but at least nothing really bad happening. And then the second part is you get another adrenaline icon, and then it says lose two survivors or discard the spy scope token if you have it, or the sniper scope token if you have it, which we do. So in this case, the sniper scope is gonna allow us to uh, safe passage by basically taking out that, um, that, that bad guy out there. Um, and so that might be an option because, well, we'd, we'd have to give up two resources if we took this path, which would be a wash kind of because we'd earn two adrenaline, but we'd give up other two. So I don't know if we really wanna do that. Now, um, this middle path here, the first part, which is exposed, says, hey, uh, you'll earn two ammo, and then if you have a map token, it is worth six points. Sadly, we do not have a map token, so we're not going to be able to um, get those six big victory points. And we don't know what's waiting for us over here. And this first part here, we have absolutely no idea, but we would earn two resources. Um... So, well, I still want to, I don't want to be in the business of giving up resources right now. I want to be, stay, keep earning resources. So I think based on that, and, and I'm going to hang on to my token here, uh, based on that, I'm probably going to choose path number two, right? Because I'm going to gain two ammo and lots of ammo is always good in this game. Uh, although we don't know what's going to happen over here. We could lose all of our ammo in a fight. We'll see. But that's what we're going to do. So we know we're going to discard these these cards here. And um, let's resolve this. So first of all, we gain two ammo. Like so. And then... Um, it says if you have a map token, it's worth six points, or we don't have a map token. And then let's expose the second part. Oh, wow. Uh, we found a gas tanker. And so um, we're going to get four gas for doing that, which is great. Really great stuff. Cool, cool, cool. And we get a victory point, which is kind of nice. So I'll put that victory point over here in my victory point pile. Take this card away. And now let's, uh, we have the ability in this game to look at um, destiny. So what was the road not taken? This one would have been, oh man, a big fight. Um, and it would have involved six zombies, including one of the horde dice, which is possibility of permanent death. So I am feeling right now, even though that was going to be two victory points had I won that, I'm feeling pretty good about having dodged that particular bullet. And the second part would have been another fight. Ooh, wow. Two victory points to win it, but six zombies. Six zombie fight here, six zombie fight here. And then there's a special action here for each kind of uh, ghost icon you get on the ranged roll, add one zombie. Um, these these icons here, if, had we rolled this in the ranged roll, so you haven't seen combat yet, but uh, combat is two phases, ranged combat and uh, melee combat. Uh, and this would have added more zombies for every uh, one of these results we would have gotten the ranged roll, which would have sucked. So I'm feeling pretty good right now that I did not choose that path. Indeed. <laughs> okay. And so now we move on to round number four. We're halfway through the game. Uh, we haven't fought anything yet, which in the zombie apocalypse is thematically correct. You want to avoid um, you know, conflict and you want to save your precious resources as much as possible. Now, of course, from a game perspective, I'm also not earning a hell of a lot of victory points. I've only got three victory points so far. Uh, obviously, in this game, the more victory points you have, the better your score. If you look at the uh, back of the rulebook here, um, let's see, it ranks you. 
Uh, if you get zero to five victory points, you're like Father Gabriel. You're a peacemaker. If you get six to ten victory points at the end of the game, you're cool. If you get 11 to 15, you're good. 16 to 18, very good. 19 to 21, 21 call me Daryl. So a reference, obviously, to The Walking Dead. I mean, the Father Gabriel was also another Walking Dead reference. Uh, and then 22 and over, lucky or genius. Uh, I believe that I have my personal best is like 17, which would have been a very good um, outcome uh, so far. So yes, yeah, so I've only got three right now. So I'm in the Father Gabriel ranking uh, for this game. Okay, and we are halfway through, uh, and we haven't fought anything yet. But don't worry, like I said earlier, there's going to be a lot of combat coming up very soon. Let's set out the three path options for uh, the next round. So totally face down at the top there. One face up card and one face down card for the middle and then two face up cards for the bottom. All right. So let's see what we see here. Uh, if we take a look at the bottom, those are two fights. Five zombie fight here and a four zombie fight here. Uh, in addition, this says if you have the Band-Aid token, lose one survivor, which I don't. So I wouldn't lose one survivor, but I would, I would be fighting nine zombies uh, right off the bat. So uh, I don't want to choose that path. And I don't want to choose the unknown right now. So I'm looking very hard at this middle path that says, well then, no swimming today. Um, so it's a body of water with a dead animal in it. Uh, and then it says, spend one gas or lose one survivor. So I guess this thematically we have to spend um, one gas to go around this body of water rather than try to ford it, try, rather than try to go through it. Um, so spending the gas, but earning some ammo. We have a little bit of, you know, extra gas. So I think that, you know, that's worth the trade-off. Spending one gas, taking an ammo, choosing the middle path. So we will take away this bottom part here and we resolve this first card so we'll take that away as well and now we have this uh, final remaining card could be a fight in fact I'm gonna guess it's probably a fight and this is well let's see let's see what happens it is most certainly a fight oh it's a bad fight okay so um, let me explain this this number here, this green icon with the number five, means we're going to fight five zombies. So let's set them out. Here are the five zombies. Oh, those, are, those are survivors. Here are the, the zombie uh, little tokens. They look like little walkers. They've got their little hands outstretched like that. So that's kind of cool. And they're all like little wood pieces. Whoa! Which is, you know, you get a, you get a bunch of really nice components with this game. And I spent about $17 for this game, so I'm feeling pretty good about the the amount of money I spent and the number of components, just the, the sheer amount of pure joy and enjoyment this game has given me, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Hey, Andy says, hey, Martin. Hi, Andy. Gav Games Tabletop, so weird. I just played this. Ha <laughs> ha, I scored nine. Thanks, Gav, for stopping by. It's got some people jo finally joining the live stream here and uh, keeping me company on a Sunday morning. Gav, yeah, your nine points would have scored you a cool rating between six to ten, based on the rule book here. But yeah, I mean, this is the game that I play when, you know, when I just want to kick back and I don't really want to think too much. Um, and I don't, I just came off of trying to learn Star Trek Frontiers and my brain melted. Had that on my table for about a week and I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm trying. I'm done trying to figure this out, and so I said, "What would be a good palate cleanser? What would be a good way to just stop the brain from overheating and yet get to play some fun games?" And here we are. We're doing some hit Z road. It's the game that you know uh, uh, um, revives my faith in the solo gaming hobby. I know, right? So poor, haha. <laughs> Not poor. Hey, the, I was just mentioning before you joined the stream that my. Um, my personal best is like 17. I've never scored more than a 17, which is a rating of very good, right? 
So, uh, whatever. I mean, the, the point is to have fun. <coughs> All right. So, um, thanks for joining. Uh, and we've got some folks interacting on the chat now, which is great. Uh, and Andy's here and Gav is here. So, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm having a lot more fun now. So, thanks for joining me. So, we are about in round uh, four. We're halfway through the game. And... Um, We've just chosen this middle path. We resolved the first part, which uh, we had to give up one gas, but we got one ammo. So far, we're doing pretty good on ammo. Our gas is okay. How much we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got 10 gas, like about 12 ammo. Adrenaline is the uh, weakest resource we have. Adrian says, I'm getting into Maximum Apocalypse. I have not printed it yet. Did you guys try it? Is it actually fun? Hey, Adrian. Uh, welcome to the stream, and uh, thanks for your question. I love Maximum Apocalypse. It is one of my favorite games um, because it is zombie-themed. Well, zombie is one of the possible um, you know, uh, bad guys you can fight in the game. The core box has four different. You got zombies, you got aliens, you got mutants. I don't know what the other is. Um, but yeah, it's. I think it's a lot of fun. I, it's, it's like a uh, card-driven dungeon crawl in an open world. Um, not yet. I just printed Villagers. Villagers is an okay tableau builder. Uh, good choice. But yeah, so... Um, I would. I definitely am a big fan of Maximum Apocalypse. Now it is a lot of cards uh, to produce, uh, so it took me about two weeks to make it uh, when I was doing that. Of course, I was trying out a different method as well. I was using my Cricut uh, automated cutting machine to cut the cards out rather than using my usual uh, card making procedure. It would have been faster had I not used a Cricut, but I was using that project to teach myself, which. In hindsight, it, you know, I probably should have chosen a smaller game. Anywho, yes, Maximum Apocalypse. I do definitely recommend that game. It is really great. And thanks for your question, and thanks for joining this, the, this, the stream today. Okay, so um, where are we at? We have to fight. We have to fight these um, zombies here. And the problem with, so as I said earlier, uh, if you've never played Hit Zero, there's two combat phases. Uh, the first part is a ranged attack. And that is less dangerous for you. Basically, um, for the ranged attack, you you can fire at the zombies from a distance. And for every two ammo tokens that you spend, or rather for every ammo token that you spend in the ranged attack, you earn two dice right? These two dice right here. So the more ammo tokens you choose to spend, the more dice you can roll, and the more chances you have of killing zombies. Now this card sucks. Um, and by the way, have I taken the reward yet? No. Um, I'm going to guess no. Um, it says to take two gas for choosing that path, so I just took the two gas. Because this card says for every um, kind of ghost face or skull face icon you roll on the on the dice in the range roll um, you will add one zombie so there's the potential for uh, actually fighting more zombies rather than killing them with the ranged attack Andy has a question is Maximum Apocalypse on BGG? It is not on BGG, it is on itch.io um, if my memory serves, uh, it is on the itch.io game uh, page of Rock Manor Games. So, Rock Manor, R O C K M A N O R, dot itch dot io. And you can purchase the Maximum Apocalypse print and play file for um, $5, if I'm not horribly mistaken. Gav says, right, I'm in the middle of a Star Wars marathon. I'll watch later to see your final score and see if I can beat it. All right, Gav, have a good one. Adrian says, thanks. It's going to take me a little more than two weeks because I'm translating them to Spanish. Wow. Uh, my friends don't speak English. Your channel is awesome. Thank you, sir. Hey, thanks a lot. And Andy, yes, I did answer your question. It is not on Board Game Geek, but it is on the, the print and play files are available on itch.io rockmanner.itch.io. Okay, 
So let's get to fighting. Um, I have a, I could choose to skip the ranged phase altogether and just start melee fighting these zombies. So I'm probably going to do that because I don't want to run the risk of adding to that number of uh, five zombies here. And fortunately, it's a green icon, not a red icon, which means we don't have to deal with these uh, horde dice with the permadeath. Okay, so how does the melee uh, combat work? Adrian says, yes, it's $5, totally worth paying. Awesome. All right. Fight. During a fight, the player must defeat all the zombies shown on the card. Uh, place zombies equal to this number in front of you to track your kills against the living dead. Each fight can have one ranged roll <coughs> when the players can fight the zombies from a safer distance. Ranged roll is optional if the player chooses to do it. Ranged roll must occur, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we are going to skip the ranged roll because of this condition on the card that there's the potential for adding more zombies. So we're just going to go right to the melee phase. Before any melee round, a player may flee. To skip the fight altogether, to flee, a player spends two gas tokens. Huh. But if we'd flee, then we wouldn't get the victory points. And I do want those victory points, so we're going to fight. Um, if you choose to skip the range roll or if there are zombies left standing, things get ugly and you must now fight in close quarters, melee, until one group, yours of the zombies, entirely eliminates the other. During each melee roll, you roll black dice equal to your meeples, survivors plus lead survivor. So we've got a total of six. Each result is resolved as follows, and then there's a table. So let's go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Take one away. Here are our six melee dice, one for each of our survivors, and we're going to go ahead and roll them. And then we're going to take a look at the results. Okay, so first of all, each one of these kind of crosshair results is a kill. One, two, three. So that's three kills right there, right off the bat. Boom, we're so cool. Now, <clears throat> this blank means a miss. Uh, you dodge, nothing happens. So now we've got an adrenaline uh, token symbol and then a... Um, ghost face with an adrenaline symbol. So let me explain what these two these two uh, icons are. This one means opportunity kill. A zombie is within reach and you may spend one adrenaline token to kill one zombie. So I've got two facing me left so I probably want to do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and spend one adrenaline token to use the opportunity kill to kill another zombie and then resolve that die. And then this die over here says um, kind of skull with an adrenaline symbol. And what that means is a casualty. One of our survivors has taken a hit, has been bitten, and will die a horrible death unless you act quickly. You must either spend one adrenaline token or lose one of your survivors. So I like to play this game thematically rather than, you know, as a game. Which means I like to like put myself in the situation. If I was in a group of six survivors and we were fighting zombies, I wouldn't, unless I really had to, sacrifice one of my survivors. Uh, if I had a resource, I could save them. So rather than saving the adrenaline token, I'm going to spend it. And that means that I save my survivor, resolve that die, but we still have one zombie facing us. Which means we have to roll the dice again. Okay, so let's do that. And then we have to keep on rolling. I'm pretty sure that's that's true, right? Uh, if the player manages to kill all the zombies, wins the fight, he takes the adventure card and places it face down in front of him. The points the players collect <coughs> are total at the end of the game. Um, yeah, so you just basically keep on rolling until one group entirely eliminates the other and you roll the number of dice equal to your meeple. So I'm going to roll six more dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's see what we got. Oh, it looks like a good result. So that's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a blank. And that's an adrenaline. So this is great. 
I didn't get any uh, skull face results in the second roll, which means you're definitely dead four times over, five times over, no, four. Uh, we also got this uh, crosshair or targeting symbol with an adrenaline. And let me explain what that one means. That is a bonus kill. Kill one zombie and you may spend one adrenaline token to kill one more zombie. So, we killed them all. And we take this card, and that is victory points. So, halfway through the game, we now have a total of five victory points, which is bad. <laughs> but the game's not over yet. Um, we haven't lost any survivors. We spent quite a bit of adrenaline in that fight. We're down to four, which is the starting. You start with four ammo, four gas, four adrenaline. Um, so that's where we are right now. And then we resolve, we move on to round five. Okay, so now that we finished that fight in the path that we did choose, let's just take a quick peek at the path that we didn't choose and see what we missed. Okay, the first part would have been a how dangerous is rattlesnake? Oh, so like a rattlesnake bite. Lose one survivor, no saving throw. No option, just lose one survivor. So, oh yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about not choosing this already. And then uh, this one would have been lesson of the day, how to make ammo. So I would have earned two ammo because Tom is a good teacher. He teaches me how to make ammo. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. All right, let me see if I can uh, scroll my chat. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, all in all, I'm feeling pretty good about the path I did choose because had I chosen this one, I would have lost a survivor. Uh, so that's that. And now it is time to set up for round five. So the game proceeds. Here we keep on going. Oops. Okay. There is our... Um, Monty, I can't pick you up. I got a dog here at my feet who's, um, he wants to get in my lap. All right. Ooh. So that's my, that's going to be my completely known path. And this is going to be my one known, one unknown. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? Okay, Monty, come here. Just stop. Okay. So for the completely uh, known path, it says gain one adrenaline token and then spend two gans, cans of gas for each can not spent, lose one survivor. So I don't want to choose this because I'm going to lose two cans of gas. Plus to choose this, I also have to give up two resources. However, the second part is the executor, which is great actually. Um, basically, we get a uh, modified uh, school bus with armor and um, like, um, you know, like a plow in the front and whatever. It's called the executor. And if we have it, as long as we have the um, steering wheel token, treat hordes as regular zombies, which is great because then we would never have to deal with the threat of the horde dice. So I really actually want this. That's super cool and super good, even though we'd have to basically give up um, two resources plus two cans of extra gas to be able to get to that card. But it's probably worth it. Um, now let's take a look at this middle part here. The first card is a fight against four zombies. So I'm obviously not choosing that because I don't want to fight them. Uh, there's no and there's no victory points either, so I'm giving up two resources to take this uh, path where everything is known. That's what I'm going to do. Now, I have most I have most of my resources are the most plentiful are ammo, so I'm going to give up two ammo to earn two um, adrenaline, which is great because I'm low on adrenaline. Um, actually, like I changed my mind. I'm going to give up one ammo and one gas. Just to spread things out and make it even. Okay. Um, and so I don't lose any survivors. And as long as I have this token, I get to treat hordes as regular zombies. Wow. That is awesome. I'm going to put this right here 
beside my victory pile to remind me that I have that, or maybe just down here, to remind me that I have that benefit. That is great. Cool, cool, cool. I didn't earn any victory points there, so that kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? All right, um, now, Hexy Beast. Hey, Martin G. Hey, 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 Johnny, how you doing? Welcome. Well, thanks. This is the first time I'm ever trying to do a live playthrough on um, on YouTube, and I'm glad that it's turning out so far, and so many of my uh, friends from the print and play and from the solo board gamers are showing up to say hi. Hi, Johnny, how you doing? What time is it over there in the UK? Uh, it is 10.22 in the morning here uh, in San Jose, California. Nice, beautiful, sunny day. And I am deciding to play some uh, Hit Z Road because it is one of my favorite games, uh, one of my favorite fillers that I play as a super thematic zombie game. Um, the perfect thing to be able to cool down my overheated brain from all that Star Trek Frontiers that I've just been spending the past week feel like I'm researching a thesis for it. Andy, when you play multiple board games, do you play the same themes? Um, I don't really think about the themes. It kind of depends on just what I, what I feel like playing. Um, so Star Trek was a sci-fi whatever that was set out for the longest time. And then right now I'm playing my, my zombie game, um, my light zombie game. Um, and then later on in the day, I could potentially, uh, It's a Wonderful World could hit the table uh, again because I'm still obsessing over that game. I really love that game. Um, Hexy Beast, I know I'm late. Sorry, LOL. It's eight, It's 6.22 p.m. All right, awesome. Over there in the UK, the Hexy Beast has joined us here in the channel. So we're, we're instantly 10 times cooler because the Hexy Beast is with us. Nice, I use Sagrada and Dragon Ball Z dice game for my fillers. Yeah, I saw your uh, your uh, video on Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I haven't seen your Sagrada one yet, um, but I, I really am interested for that, that Dragon Ball Z game. Although, you know what? I never actually watched... Uh, I know, mea culpa, mea culpa. I never actually watched the anime. Um, I only know the memes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so let's figure out where we are. We resolve the path that we took. We got a nice bonus where we get to treat all horde um, fights as regular fights as long as we have this this uh, token here. <laughs> Hope we don't lose it. So now let's take a look at uh, the path we didn't take. Uh, everything's much hexier. <laughs> yes, absolutely agree. The path we didn't take. So it would have been a fight without victory points for the first part of it. And in the second part of it, no fight, but basically this person uh, is going to poison us with the, the, the drinks. Roll one die for each of your survivors. For each um, uh, skull face symbol you get, lose one survivor. Ouch. This is a brutal card right here because there's no, uh, there's no mitigation. Basically, it's roll one, two, three, four, five, six dice. And then however many of this result you get, the um, that result, uh, you get, you lose you lose the survivor. And there's no choice. Um, you better um, you, you better be com comfortable with like permadeath and random permadeath, like a roguelike in this game, because it can totally happen. And um, the adrenaline tokens are your primary method of mitigating randomness, but just they don't apply in every situation. Um, which some people can't handle that level of randomness, but I'm totally cool with it. Like, <laughs> but just thematically, it's like, oh, you end up in a nice day with this nice, this nice cute girl, and she's offering you drinks. Turns out it was poisoned, um, and you have to roll a dice for each one of your survivors, and for everyone that gets that skull face symbol, they just die. <laughs> I mean, this this game has a sick sense of humor. I gotta say. That Dragon Ball Z wasn't so bad. You know what? You're learning, man. It's just, it's just the way it is. All right. And now let's take a look at the top um, path that we didn't choose that was completely hidden. So the first part is uh, basically your car gets jacked. Discard one of your resources. Okay. But not a fight. 
And then the second one is a fight at the hospital, at the emergency room, with five zombies. But it would have given a straight-up fight, no, no modifiers, not a horde fight. But we would have, we would have gotten one victory point. Yeah. Oh, I have a doggy here that's just wants to get in my lap. Okay, so I didn't choose either of those either. So here in round number five, um, we are safe. We've got a lot of resources, relatively speaking. We've got all of our survivors. We've got a cool uh, armored bus that we're riding in um, that's going to allow us to treat all zombie fights as regular zombie fights rather than horde fights. But we only have five uh, victory points. Yeah, so uh, from a thematic standpoint, if we were actually in the zombie apocalypse, we're doing great. From a, you're playing a game and you have to score victory point standpoint, we are not doing very well at all. Say no to drink. <laughs> Depends on the situation. Uh, I am a big fan of uh, recreational uh, uh, adult beverage, you know, when it's the right time. Okay, so now we are in the level three cards. We are in round five. We are three rounds away from the end of the game. Oy vey. Okay. This is Monty, and he just wants to get in my lap. So he's going to just chill out here while I make it difficult for me to play my game. Okay, I didn't see that card. <laughs> All right. Second part. Yaw. And third part. Completely known information. Ouch. That is big fight, big fight. Oh, two big fights. Okay, let's take a look at what we can see here. Here at the very bottom, two huge fights. We've got a fight. Uh, you're basically stuck in a city, kind of like reminiscent of the very first episode or season of The Walking Dead where you're kind of stuck in Atlanta. We've been here for almost a week and you kind of want to break out, but you got to fight six, six zombies. That's bananas. And then you finish that, and then there's no there's no victory points. And if you get through that, um, you have to fight six more zombies. So this is basically just like an uh, all-out war to get out of the city, right? Okay, now you want to get down. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> um, and um, which is which is kind of cool, like thematically. And you would get two big victory points for uh, for completing this gauntlet, but. Six zombie plus six zombie fights, super dangerous. Mitigated a little by the fact that we've got the armored bus. Um, so these wouldn't be horde battles. We wouldn't be rolling horde dice for the permadeath. Um, so you got to pick your battles here, right? You got to choose when you are actually going to fight. Um, and this one is a guaranteed two victory points, but I give up two resources to choose this, um, this path here. So that's something to consider. This middle path, Derek drives a hard bargain, it says, but Ashley needs meds for the others. So spend one gas or lose one survivor. So for this middle path, I know for the first card, I'd spend one gas or I'd lose a survivor. I wouldn't gain anything. There's no victory points there. Safe. It's a safe choice. And then this one, we don't know. Could be a fight. So this seems to be the easier path. This is definitely the hard, like, insanity path. So I'm not going to choose insanity. I'm not insane. Uh, and then this is completely unknown information. So I have to make a choice knowing only this first part. So I'm going to make a conservative choice and choose this middle part. I will not lose or gain any uh, resources by choosing this middle path. I do have to spend one gas or lose a survivor. So there we spent the one gas, and in trade we got meds for our survivors. Cool. That was the first part. Let's see what the second part is. It is a regular fight. Oh, that card actually shouldn't be there. Because in the solo game setup, you're supposed to remove all cards that have this, um, the, because uh, thematically it's like, hey, uh, these are actually like, uh, um, Playing cards that the the character in the game uh, kind of drew over, 
uh, drew their own game over, so it's kind of another cool uh, thematic touch there. But that's actually not supposed to be in the game. Well, too late now. I screwed up in the setup. So do I continue to play that, or do I replace it with a, another level 3 card? I think I will replace it with another level 3 card. Um, so I'm going, because I'm not, if I had set it up correctly, I actually shouldn't have encountered this card at all. So I'm going to put that over there. Replace it with another face down level three card. So that, that first card never happened. Okay, here we go. It's a fight. It says, roll a die. And if you don't get a crosshair, lose a survivor. Okay. So we have to do that. Rolling a die. We do get a crosshair. We don't lose a survivor. Woohoo! What does the number on the card backs mean? That, thank you, great question. Uh, that is the level. So these cards at the start of the game are arranged in level one, the easier cards, level two in the middle, the medium difficulty cards, and then level three at the bottom the high difficulty card. So we're definitely in level three now. We are fighting level three and we are at um, round five of the game. So we've still got six, seven, eight. And I may have actually screwed up in terms of the round, uh, uh, keeping track of the rounds. We might actually be in round six, depending on seeing as how many cards are left. We'll see how that goes. All right. So we did not lose a survivor. We gain two ammo based on this, but we do have to fight three zombies. Fortunately, similar to Legendary 007, gotcha. Awesome. I don't have Legendary 007, but um, yeah, many games use that kind of like pandemic. Does pan pandemic? No. Like where you where you arrange the Aeon's End, where you arrange the uh, like the Nemesis deck and the Strike deck in increasing order of difficulty and you don't shuffle it. So that's kind of cool. <coughs> All right. So we have to fight. Now we have a choice of doing a ranged attack, which is safer because the zombies don't get to counterattack, or if we just want to fight melee. We have six um, survivors here. The odds are good that we would take out these three zombies and set out the three zombies here. So cool. So the question is, do I want to go safe or do I want to just wade in guns blazing, machetes hacking, uh, and take out these zombies? Tharindu Ashen says, new to your channel, like and subscribe. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Tharindu. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for uh, uh, subscribing to the channel. Hexy Beast, I'm ashamed to admit I've never played Pandemic or Ticket to Ride, LOL. Ticket to Ride, you're not missing much. It's not soloable um, at all, um, unless you have a, a, an Alexa device, an, an Amazon Echo, then you can play it solo. Uh, there are solo variants. I have not tried them. But you know what? It's, it's okay. It's, it's a fine family weight game. Pandemic is actually one of the games that you know got me into the hobby, along with Eldritch Horror. Um, I wouldn't play Vanilla Pandemic really anymore, but I would definitely still play uh, Reign of Cthulhu, is my favorite uh, flavor of Pandemic. Andy, Legendary James Bond is a great game, played it this morning. Awesome, I'm very curious. Uh, Tharindu, how can I join the auction? Auction? I'm confused. I don't know what auction you mean, sir. <laughs> Are you talking about the auction mechanic in the game? Um, or are you talking about the contest that I'm running on the print and play hideaway? Uh, if that's what you mean, uh, just find my post and then reply to it saying, I, what did I say? I want a chance to win. Uh, later today, after this video, I'm going to choose the winners. Hexy Beast and Andy Burry, I really do enjoy it also. Yeah, legendary James Bond. I will check that out. Nine people on the stream here right now. That's kind of cool. Not bad for my first time doing a live YouTube playthrough. All right. So we got a fight. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to give up 
two ammo in a ranged phase, and for each uh, ammo that we give up, we get four of these dice. And on um, these dice in the ranged phase, we ignore every other result except a crosshair, except a target. Oh, so that was awful, actually. We only, in the ranged phase, used um, one. We got one crosshair, which means we took out one zombie. Everything else was ignored, so th these results don't matter in the range phase. So, range phase did not work out for us as we expected. Kane, hi Kane. Good day, sir. Glad I have some free time during a live play. And you have caught us. Uh, we're getting close to the uh, the climax of the of the game here. So, welcome to the stream, Tharindu. Can you describe what you are doing? Actually, I found this while looking for online auctions. Uh, yeah, no, this is not an auction, dude. Uh, this is a game playthrough. I'm playing a board game called Hit Z Road, and uh, which is one of my favorite games. That's all I'm doing. Not an auction. Yeah, and uh, we are... The only winning that's going to potentially happen here is I could potentially win a good score. That's about it. <laughs> all right. Um, get some coffee here. All right, so uh, we got Kane, we got Johnny the Hexy Beast, we got Andy, we got five other folks on the stream here, and we are rolling along. We are now going to go into melee combat with these two zombies. We got six survivors, two zombies. What could possibly go wrong? So now in the melee phase, you roll one die for each one of your survivors. So let's add two more dice here. Here we go. I hope you like chucking dice, because we're going to be chucking a lot of dice right now. Awesome. I'll tell you right now, this is a great result. This is a great result. We got one, two, three crosshairs. More than enough, kapow, to take out those zombies. So this battle could not have gone better for us. And we did not get any results that mean that uh, one or more of our survivors were bitten. So that... That's one of the best rolls I've had all day, which means my luck is not my luck is soon to run out. <laughs> all right, cool, cool, cool. So uh, we resolve this uh, fight. There's no victory points there, sadly. So we're still here at game round five or six. I'm kind of unsure. We're still rocking only the five victory points, which is not good at all. Never played it before. It looks cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. I do recommend it. Do you have to roll a dice before each attack? Um, you only So the combat is only two phases, the ranged phase, and you'll roll dice for that ranged phase. And then that was, that was the only time. That's the only dice you roll for the ranged phase. And then you go into the melee phase. Uh, you will roll... Basically, you keep rolling until you wipe out all the zombies or the zombies wipe out all the... Um, all the survivors. That's that's pretty much it. So you just keep rolling and you keep resolving the dice results and you keep spending adrenaline tokens to change or mitigate results because that's the primary way to mitigate randomness in this game um, until you take out all your bad guys. Uh, and Johnny is absolutely correct. You would roll one die for each of your survivors, each of your meeples, which I have six currently right now. All right, so we've resolved that. Now let's see what was the path not taken. Um, we've been doing this since the start of the game. What would have happened had we chosen the top path where both cards were face down? We would have had a big fight on the beach with one victory point, three zombies. So I would have preferred actually to do that, and I would have gained one adrenaline and one gas. Oh man, and then the payoff for Timmy who joined our team earlier. Um, Timmy enters pyro mode. It's a slaughter. Uh, turns out Timmy is uh, something of an explosive expert. If you have the um, uh, stick figure token, which I do, all zombies from this card are killed, then discard the token. Damn! That would have been awesome. That means that that six zombie fight over there 
wouldn't have had to fight them, and I would have gotten the victory points because Timmy just blew them up. <laughs> okay, so um, kind of kind of sucks that we did, and we would have gotten two victory points for choosing that path. So that's you know kind of the uh, the 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 good and bad of this game is that you have to make decisions each round based on what you know and. You have to like kind of take a chance or or, or uh, risk. You have to take a risk, and so here's a, a situation where definitely had I chosen this top part, that would have been a lot better for me than choosing the bottom part. So, but or the middle part, which is what I did choose. So, what are you gonna do? Such is such is life. So that was round five. We now move on to round six. Could potentially be round seven. I don't know. Uh, basically, when these cards run out is when um, is when the game ends. Okay, and I still only have the five victory points. Okay, so what do we got? Um, let's take a look at the cards for round six. This uh, first fight is a big six zombie fight where you cannot flee from the fight, and if you complete it, you get one victory point. <coughs> and then there is a one zombie fight where if at least one player has been eliminated from the game, fight eight zombies instead of one. Well, no players have been eliminated from the game, so I would fight one zombie over here. So a total of seven zombies, one victory point. If I choose this bottom path, no resources earned. Um, I would have to give up two resources to, to choose this path. Whereas, in the middle, um, spend two cans of gas, and for each gas not spent, lose one survivor. I do have a lot of gas. I would earn an adrenaline, and I don't know what this card is, but it's probably going to be a fight. So... And then this is completely unknown. And I'm running out of time because I think I s totally screwed up the... Uh, how many cards are left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I, I'm actually on round seven. So um, if I don't start taking risks now, I'm not going to have a lot of victory points at the end. So I think... Rather than choosing this or choosing this, I'm going to go now and choose the top one. For the first time in the game, I'm going to stop playing conservatively. So let's see what would have happened. Yeah, I think you should go for the top row. Absolutely, I agree with you. This would have been a four zombie fight and then roll a die. And if you don't get a target or crosshair or lose one survivor, that would have been one victory point as well. So yeah, so... We're going to do the top one. So first of all, if you choose the top one, you get um, resources, two resources of your choice. And since I'm low on adrenaline, I'm going to choose adrenaline because adrenaline lets you modify dice rolls. So let's take a look at the first card. Andy says, got to go talk to you soon. Thanks for stopping by, Andy. Okay, the first card is a five zombie fight um, with no victory points. So that sucks. And then it says, for each biohazard token you have, lose one survivor. Fortunately, I don't have any biohazard tokens. Uh, and I do get one extra adrenaline, which is great. So now i got to fight five zombies. So I will roll... Well, first of all, let's see how many I can take out in the, um, in the long range. So I'll, I'll spend two ammo tokens to get four dice. And we'll roll these four dice. I like that I now know how to play this game. I'm gonna buy it when I get a chance. Yeah, man, it's a great deal. I bought it for $17. It's a really, really cool game. And what do we got? Okay, we got one dead for sure. Oh, that was five. I forgot to set up the zombies. And I'm going to have to get up in just a second to let a dog out of the room. All right, there you go. Dogs keep wanting to go in and out. 
of my office here. Okay. Um, so we got five. We definitely took out one. So that's down to four. And in the long range phase or the distance attack phase, you uh, ignore any other results um, that are not across here. So we get that. And now we close into melee phase. And so now we roll six dice. Six dice, four zombies. Let's see what happens. Whew, okay, not great at all. So here, we got the two crosshair, so two more of these zombies get taken out. Everything else was a miss. Uh, <laughs> right, so we're fighting two zombies left, and we've got to roll all six dice again. Whew. Oh man, a whole heck of a lot of bad stuff going on here. Very, very bad. Okay, so first things first, we've definitely got the two crosshairs, which means they're all dead. But, and I didn't need the one last crosshair. Here's what's here's the bad thing. Three of my survivors got bitten by those two zombies. So that sucks. Which means I have to spend one um, adrenaline token for each one of these, or I lose a survivor. So, one, two, three adrenaline tokens, there you go. Because they got bitten, so we got to do first aid on them. Cool, cool, cool. And that was the first part, and no victory points either, which sucks. So now let's see what happens here. Probably a fight, hopefully victory points. Ugh, it is a fight, and there's no victory points. Okay, so, uh, it says we earn one adrenaline, so at least we got that. And we have to fight five zombies, and then it says for each skull result you get on the ranged roll, add one zombie, which to me means I don't want to risk a ranged attack here. Uh, I'm just going to close in. I'm going to, because the ranged attack is optional, so I'm going to choose not to resolve it for this combat and just move into melee range, which means we're going to roll all six of these dice again and see what's what. Looks good. Okay, so first of all, we have this die. Oh, and that was five, so I keep on forgetting to set out the zombies. Okay. So, first things first, we've got crosshair, crosshair, that's two zombies dead. Resolve those. And then this crosshair with a, an adrenaline token means um, I take out a zombie. And then if I spend an adrenaline, I take out another zombie. Yes, I do want to do that. Cool. Down to one. Now, each one of these is an opportunity attack. Spend an adrenaline, take out another zombie. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. So let me just check the rules super quick. Opportunity kill. A zombie is within reach. You may spend one adrenaline token to kill one zombie. Cool. So, take one of these, spend another adrenaline, kill the last zombie. Boom. Because I don't want to risk having to roll those dice again. So they're all dead. But, I do have to deal with this. Which means one of my guys got bitten. So I have to spend yet another adrenaline to uh, bind their wounds. First aid. So that was... And the sucky part is, it wasn't even a victory point battle. So, no matter what happens, I'm going to have a really bad score for this game. However, even if you don't earn victory points on the cards, printed on the cards, you do get victory points for every complete set of um, resources that you're able to bring in. Uh, so I've got a lot of ammo and a lot of gas. As long as I don't have to spend any more adrenaline, then I might... I might actually um, end up with some more victory, some more extra victory points. So let's see. Let's resolve the final battle of the game. Johnny says, "I like that resources are used for mitigation." Yeah, absolutely. It's a you know what? It's a small, light smartly designed game, which is why I'm drawn to it. And it's the game that originally got me um, introduced to Martin Wallace. 
Um, and this is apparently not a typical game for him. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I love this game so much. Okay, so uh, what do we got? Roll a die. If you don't get a um, crosshair, lose one survivor. Fight four zombies. Gain adrenaline. And this one is you can't spend any adrenaline during this fight. One victory point. Ouch. This one says, Tim, dirty little traitor. So Tim can be a double-edged sword. Tim, earlier, had we chosen that path, would have blown up a whole bunch of zombies. But um, this one says, Tim just decides to leave your party. He says, if you have the um, stick figure token, spend three ammo and then discard the token. So basically, he makes off with a bunch of your ammo, which kind of sucks. So obviously, I am not... Um, I'm not choosing that path, uh, and then have to fight Zig Zombies on top of losing three ammo. Do not want that. Um, this would net me one victory point, having to fight four zombies. Both of those fights have bad effects. I especially don't want to do the you can't spend any adrenaline during this fight, which is an almost guaranteed people are going to die in that fight. This is the last fight, by the way. So I'm not going to choose the middle path. And I'm not going to choose the lowest path. What was the second part of path two? It would have been a four zombie fight, and then for each biohazard token you have, lose one survivor. Well, I don't have the biohazard token. No victory points. And now what I'm hoping, I'm hoping is that the unknown path that I'm choosing for now will give me uh, some victory points. I know I'm going to have to fight, and I'm going to I'm going to choose to earn. You choose you. Earn two resources for choosing the unknown path. So I'm going to choose those two adrenaline tokens. Uh, and we're going to resolve the first card. Ugh. No victory points. And it is a, you can't spend any adrenaline during this fight. That sucks. So uh, people are going to die. But we do get an ammo token. You know, it, you're right, it all does come down to this. So I've got four zombies to fight, can't spend any adrenaline. The uh, flavor text says, I should have played more Counter-Strike. <laughs> okay. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna do a, um, so that's four zombies, let's set them out. All right. Let's roll, uh, Let's roll four. So I'm going to give up two ammo tokens to roll four ranged attack dice. And let's see what happens. I get to take out one. You uh, ignore all other results in the ranged attack phase. So it's down to three. And so now we will roll six dice for all six of my survivors. Let's see, that's a kill, that's a kill, that's a kill. Great, so three dead. Now, um, this is bad. So I can't spend any adrenaline to uh, take care of my bitten survivor, which means I'm just, one survivor's gonna die. <clears throat> so that's Timmy, I'm gonna choose Timmy because I know in another in another reality, Timmy would have taken away, uh, would have made off with my ammo. So that is that. And that resolves the first card, but doesn't net me any victory points. So this is the absolute final card that I resolve for the game. And of course, once again, no victory points. So that sucks. So we've got, I earn one um, adrenaline. And it says, for each skull you get on the ranged roll, add one zombie. Which means I'm not going to do a ranged roll. Timmy knew. <laughs> We're going to um, skip the range, uh, the range attack phase for now. And we're going to roll. We, we fight six zombies. So this is it. This is the final fight of the game. And if we can make it through this fight, then... Whoever surviving at the end of this fight will uh, make it to Sanctuary in LA. Here we go. This is it. It all comes down to this. So now we're rolling five dice rather than six because 
we're down to five survivors. Okay, so what do we got? A miss and a miss. So first of all, we've got uh, three dead, for sure. And then we have an opportunity. This, this uh, result is called, that is a bonus kill. Kill one zombie and you may spend one adrenaline token to kill one more zombie. Okay. So I will spend two more adrenaline to kill two more zombies. And that resolves this card. And that is the end of the game. So now let's total up our victory points. So basically scoring works. Add up all the points from cards one. Receive one additional point for each complete set of one survivor, one gas, one ammo, one adrenaline. So that survivor, gas, uh, gas, ammo, adrenaline. Survivor, ammo, gas, adrenaline. Survivor, ammo, gas, adrenaline. Survivor, ammo, gas, adrenaline. And me, survivor, ammo, gas, adrenaline. So I'm going to get extra five victory points because of these complete sets, plus the five I earned uh, through my adventure. Uh, so my total victory points is 10, which according to the chart on the back is cool. So the six to 10 range is cool. It's one step up from the Father Gabriel uh, level, which is zero to five. So um, really not a great showing in terms of victory points. Um, Hexy Beast, this one is for Timmy. <laughs> Love it. Um, but um, we lost only one survivor uh, and we made it from Chicago to LA. We probably in hindsight maybe played a little too conservatively maybe should have taken more risks uh gone after more combat we would have had more losses we would have lost more resources so that strategy might not have borne fruit but you know that's kind of like how the way this game works so anyway um that is this morning this sunday morning's playthrough of Hit Z Road by Martin Wallace, uh, which is, I, in my opinion, a great solo filler game. And guess what? This time, in this playthrough, I actually didn't play it wrong. I'm pretty sure I played everything right, unlike my previous playthrough from a few months back where I completely screwed up the last round. So, until next time, uh, this has been Martin. I want to say thank you to Johnny the Hexy Beast. Thank you to Andy Burry. Thank you to uh, Thurindu. Thank you for thank you to Kane for dropping by. Thank you to um, who else showed up? Gav Scott showed up. All the folks who uh, were nice enough to stop by. Kane, thanks for doing a playthrough, Martin. This one's on my shelf of opportunity. Well, Kane, you definitely have to have to play it now. Uh, Sinocon Games, great playthrough. Thanks, Martin. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Things have been entertaining to watch. Hey, uh, I love that you guys were here with me and uh, helped me to kind of while away a uh, Sunday morning. You guys stay hexy. <laughs> stay safe, stay sane. Until next time, we'll see you at the table.